Hi, I'm Steve Miller, call me Slim, and this is the Ask Slim Market Week. It's a look back at what happened in the financial markets in the last week and a look forward at what might happen in the next week. And well, this has been a week where volatility has started to pick up around the world. I wasn't uh, here last week, I had a week off, but uh, man, there has been some movement. And uh, you can start looking at worldwide at the uh, third market currencies, uh, they are really struggling. China currency slipping on the downside and people starting to worry about that. But there's a lot more to worry about. Emerging markets, three bad weeks on the downside. European markets, two bad weeks on the downside. Our stock market here in the U.S. seemingly holding up, but man, it has changed its tone right now. Uh, I did uh, back in January a piece on uh, stock sectors uh, looking at the um, country ETFs and uh, showed that I thought they were going to decline uh, into January. Some pretty steep declines coming and sure enough here it comes. Uh, oil, well that pulled the markets down and as a matter of fact it's been pulling the markets around by the nose or traders around by the nose as there has been some wide swings. Oil makes a seven year low trading under $36 and uh, that has uh, been uh, the word that everybody is talking about is oil, 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 as we've seen uh, this moves uh, really constant pressure in there and there's talk about record shorts in the oil markets well that doesn't seem to really matter well maybe we'll get some brief pops in oil and I'll talk about that of course as we look at the short-term view uh, towards the end of the show also uh, we'll have junk market the junk bond market the high yield markets really coming apart also I did a special on that this week go into my tools for text and look at my correlations piece in there looking at junk bonds and the oil market and the stock market and uh, pretty interesting picture make sure you go watch that one don't miss it and uh, in that uh, particular vein well Kinder Morgan uh, they cut their dividend by 75 percent and the word is there right now that a high yield junk uh, bond fund uh, is liquidating and they've locked out their investors don't let them draw any funds Third Avenue is the name of that high yield bond fund and uh, that has got the market worried have a lot of people talking about that right now also. Iron ore uh, down again on the week and it's been under constant pressure this year. How about iron ore down 46% for 2015? That has been uh, huge pressure on the material stocks and they have been big losers this week also. We'll uh, look at that in the worst of the week. Uh, so uh, lots and lots going on here in the markets. It's really been oil. I mean it has really greased the skids now for the stock market. Key support was broken uh, here today and uh, lots of selling as that word comes out about the liquidation going on in the high yield market and there is a lot of risk here we'll look at that also in our short-term view of the coming market and of course the big news this week will be FOMC show you that in the calendar coming up in just a moment let's take a look at uh, our 60 minute chart of the ES that's the S&P 500 and uh, we'll take a look at what actually uh, helped move the markets this week and here is that 60 minute chart and uh, let's take a look at it day by day the gray areas are the uh, overnight trading the white area is the normal day tr pit trading that's the pit trading right in here and this right in here you will see is overnight trading well Friday we had a big rally the previous Friday in the stock market had a big bounce uh, but then uh, problem was was that coming in on Monday 
oil was collapsing and how about 5.7 percent on the downside that was the lowest we had seen since 2009 commodities were weak iron ore led on the downside there but world markets they got a bounce as the eurozone was up about one and a half percent japan up a percent uh following the u.s stock market uh, and uh, which had that big bungee jump at the end of last week. Uh, materials, energy stocks, they were down 6 to 9% though uh, on Monday and ended up a lot of selling came in during the day on Monday and then a rebound late in the day. GMCR on a crazy buyout, 72% up on the day as JAB Holdings uh, pays a big premium for that and uh, interestingly it does make Coke even on that they get to get out of their holdings in there without a loss you wonder if that isn't why they paid some stupid price for GMCR unbelievable comes Tuesday world markets are weak again China data disappoints oil continues to collapse and that's pretty much the theme of the week US stocks open weak but they have a big bounce you see right in here oil bounces right there uh, that's after china data knocked everything down and that got the market bouncing but it really could not hold and energy and material stocks they were big down again comes wednesday well again it's all about oil markets kind of eased down overnight they were mixed to lower in europe uh gold uh was the dollar was weaker and that helped gold and oil well look what happened in here oil bounced big right early on in the day of course that's the es pattern you're looking at but look at how it just pulled the stock market up but then oil reversed and dropped right there and look what happened i mean oil 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 that's really what has been moving the es market uh the s p 500 around all week long so u.s stocks opened weak but had that big rally and volatility comes in and oil drives the market to the downside big upside leaders was word about dow and dupont deal and that word uh turns out to be true as on friday they report that they are merging uh and the nasdaq was weaker on wednesday on the techs moving to the downside you could see overnight on thursday not a lot going on in here world markets were slightly lower dollar bounces and oil is still weak u.s stocks rally with depressed stocks really getting good pops during the day uh, material oil stocks they were stronger but they have gotten annihilated of course comes friday and man oh man do we see a lot of news coming out oil is very weak again it's down over a dollar under 35 as i do this report under 36 as i do this report the international energy association sees a continued glut as it turns out that producers are not pulling back at all world markets slide overnight you can see that right in here and then the u.s markets follow s p's down 25 overnight uh, before opening Dow down 253 the VIX is trading up 16 percent and then continues to get a bid VIX now up 28 percent uh, on the day it's an astounding big move in implied volatilities PPI comes out up three tenths of a percent but it's negative for 2015 and uh, so much for the ability for the FOMC to create any inflation they have nothing to do with creating inflation that's for sure and we can see the stock market continues on the downside any little interday rally getting sold lots of talk about uh, that uh, third avenue a new um, uh, fund, a uh, high yield fund liquidating and other talk of uh, other potential funds that could have some problems and uh, the stock market getting sold very hard uh, today. Right now, uh, as I speak, s and is down about 33 points and uh, that is uh, just after the, the midday period as I do this report uh, as a uh, short term view I'm going to do uh, cop I'm going to do a little bit later uh, because I want to get closer to the end of the day uh, uh, see what how the stock market finishes in here so that is a look at what happened in the last week and you can see lots of influences as commodities are super weak and this junk bond market which I talked about uh, actually a couple months ago I did a, a piece on it and then again earlier this week really influencing the markets on the downside don't miss that piece I did 
uh, I think it's, it's only a 12 minute video and it's for members so uh, not very expensive to become a member and go in there and uh, I think that you're going to see the correlations uh, pretty compelling. So uh, our calendar coming up for the week, that's the next thing we're going to look at in here. And uh, here is our calendar uh, for the uh, next week. Uh, let me just get that up for you. Uh, and here it comes. And you can see this is our earnings and economic calendar for the coming week. And this uh, shows you that, well, there's not much in the way of earnings, of course. Uh, Tuesday morning, uh, Wednesday morning, you get joy. You can see that. And that stock has gotten absolutely hammered. Uh, we have, uh, after the close on Wednesday, Federal Express and Oracle. Uh, Pre-opening on Thursday is General Foods. And after the close, Red Hat. And then uh, on Friday morning, BlackBerry, Darden, and CarMax. Uh, coming out now during the week the news events that are coming out uh, are uh, The midweek is what's really significant uh, Tuesday. We have that consumer price index coming and then on Wednesday We have this big event everybody knows or thinks that the FOMC is going to tick up interest rates for the first time in nine years. But look what's happening in the junk yield uh, market, junk bond market. You got to wonder whether or not they're really going to raise rates uh, under that condition of maybe one of the worst backgrounds we've seen since the 2008-2009 debacle. Uh, in the world econ markets, world economies. And uh, so you got to wonder, but also you got to say to yourself, what has the MS FOMC done to prevent this from coming? Nothing. They actually created it. You know that? Because of all the loose money that Greenspan brought and Bernanke brought, you know, they create bubbles and then there's a male investment. And then before you know it, uh, there's a deflationary period. And that's what we're seeing right now as money flows strongly into the U.S. Treasury market in a flight to safety and uh, out of uh, here of the um, junk market. Got to really wonder about that. So that's the big event uh, coming up for the week. And uh, uh, it's going to potentially surprise the markets uh, if uh, the Fed does not raise rates. And then, you know, essentially investors, traders, they'll be saying, how bad are things here if they can't raise rates now uh, based on all of this talk and all of this setup? And that will scare the markets. And there's a potential for that. And uh, you'll see in my short term view later in the show. I think there's risk here, very significant risk. All right, that is the opening segment. And uh, we will be back in a moment and I'll bring you the best and worst of the week. For the best of the week, well, not that many great stocks here to report this week. There's a few based on some deals uh, and based on some bounces. Uh, first one you got to talk about is GMCR. Again, mentioned that one. Up 64% on the week. Incredible as JAB Holdings buys that uh, stock out. They pay $14 billion. And uh, that is, as I said, gets coke even on that one. And why did they have to pay that much? That is just crazy. That stock had been under enormous pressure. And uh, now, so it uh, gets taken out. It was actually just turning up on our uh, uh, analytical work, interesting, and now, well, it comes out of our universe because it's gone. So that's GMCR, Green Mountain Coffee Roasters. You can uh, scratch that one out of our trading universe. Sears SHLD, um, this one uh, was in our worst for the year list. Uh, by the way, GMCR was also, and it was a stock that I got hammered until that buyout. Uh, SHLD is the uh, one we're going to look at right now. Uh, this one gets a pop in here as uh, uh, Buffett takes 8% of stake in their spinoff Seritage. And uh, this stock still to us looks like it is crapola. Uh, we're going to look for this move down in here 
all the way into February, uh, and I think this stock will continue to be in a lot of trouble. As I said, this was on my list uh, and a worst three for the year, and the stock continues to move on the downside. Remember, I think JCPenney is one in the same category that is also going to be uh, in a lot of trouble. It's already in a lot of trouble, but a lot lower than the $7 and change is trading now. Whole Foods is one that's been under a lot of pressure, uh, and uh, they came out on Friday, they uh, which it jumped six percent, and uh, it's uh, actually yeah, up about six and a half percent right now. Here you can see this pattern in here. Now notice how our cyclical pattern suggested the stock would decline right here into November and then tick up. A really beautiful alignment in there as uh, we are uh, looking now at uh, Whole Foods is one that you actually can buy. The stock moves up. Uh, about uh, a 6% based on the fact that they are talking about sales are going to beat. So they've seen some pickup in sales. And of course, retail has been just horrendous. So stock moves down from 58 all the way down to 28. And now this buying comes in. And you see this is the first week up right there. Let's just take a closer look so that you can see that. And resistance comes in around that 34-week moving average, right around 36 bucks. So I think if you get a pullback in here, you can buy it. This is a decent uh, looking stock. I wouldn't chase it at the moment right now. U.S. Steel gets a pop in here, 9% on the week. This is just a plain bad stock bouncing. Here you could see our colored phasing, and it's in this red zone, likely to fall all the way into late January. So this is a bad stock. Gets a pop in there. Talk about bad stocks. Urban, U-R-B-N. This one uh, gets a pop for the week, up about 7%. And uh, this one you could see also in the red zone. And we think this one's going to continue to move to the downside. I think a high probability of testing that area around 19, also here out into mid-late January. So uh, that shows a lot of potential weakness there. So these are some stocks that got pops in here uh, that uh, just are, you know, other than Whole Foods, I think are in still in some significant trouble. Uh, just another favorable mention, uh, Sun, S-U-N-E, Sun Edison, up 8% on the week. Uh, that one is uh, a losing stock. They lose a lot of money. The pattern is improving. There is a little sign in there that uh, it could be uh you know, okay for a little bit, but n n still do not like that stock. DuPont Dow, you have to talk about those. They're up 5% on the week as they're going to merge into Dow DuPont, one company, and then I think break it up into three smaller uh, segments or three smaller companies have yet to really figure out how that deal is going to work, but uh, they jump up in here and uh, that might have something to do with taxes. Uh, of course, because uh, DuPont is a company that's uh, really out of the country. So uh, that is the best of the week and not a lot to report there. And I'll be right back with the worst. For the worst stocks of the week, a clear winner here in Navistar. This stock coming down from the 40s uh, all the way down to, well, $8.31 this week. Just absolutely debacle. Over 30% down on the week and the clear winner of worst of the week. This stock clearly has been negative. We have had it as negative based on everything we look at, short term, long term everything and here it continues to break you can see this big down move here in these last couple of weeks this cycle pattern right in here says the decline goes out to mid-january you can see how much that we're looking at looks like mid-january so that looks like a lot of weakness in the stock market out till mid-january and you can see the cyclic action in here very clear and uh, these charts help you understand the, the movement of money in and out and this one money moving out take a look in here and you could see on the daily chart we're just going to switch over to a couple dailies in here and you can see here as that's 89 day moving average has just been moving on the downside typically you get these perfect touches of uh, 89 you see that right in here and right over here gets close to it and then it moves back to the downside again so free fall going on in Navistar 
really an incredibly ugly stock. Joy Manufacturing, very similar. Uh, Navistar, essentially, everybody knows it. It used to be, you know, in the farm machinery industry, but basically they're in the truck diesel engine school buses. And uh, that's, uh, so, you know, maybe it's just that nobody's going to use di diesel engines anymore. I know people got to go to school, right? So, uh, but this stock just absolutely buried. They had had a real hard time with some natural gas engines way back when, and they thought they had that problem resolved. But now it turns out this stock, just a real stinker. Don't look for any real advance in here all the way into January, I would say. So here is the next stock we're going to look at on the downside, C-I-E-N, uh, Sienna, and this stock down 18% on the week. Whoops, wrong symbol. That's why that didn't cup. C-I-E-N, there you go. And uh, this stock down 18% on the week. Look at this pattern in here. Interesting pattern in here because the stock tried to look good with some of these other semiconductors. Uh, this is actually a networking stock. The semiconductors are a stronger group than uh, this one is. And uh, just this huge downside move in here. They lower guidance this week. Their revenues disappoint and the stock gets absolutely hammered. Take a look here. This looks like a decline out into February on this one. So any rally is likely to be really uh, a failure. You can see it had really strong positive momentum and then the momentum uh, the momentum signal didn't really come until this downside gap, so we didn't have a good out right there. Here was a signal right here of an engulfing pattern, but here's where it turned positive and gave you that nice move on the upside, but sadly we didn't really get a good signal about this break in here. Sometimes we don't get them, and uh, this one moves sharply to the downside. Next one we're going to look at uh, in this uh, uh, worst of the week category is Sun Power SPWR. They come out with a $400 million convertible, and uh, this stock uh, moves Oh man, I can seem to get SPWR. There we go. Uh, seems like I'm hitting the wrong symbols today. This one uh, had this huge engulfing pattern here on the weekly and then turns down and then you have this breakdown under the 34 week moving average and this one looks like it comes down into January also. Now one thing I want to say about Sun Power. Now this stock that came out with the convertible, it knocked it down. This is one of the best earnings. Now it's got a pretty high PE, uh, uh, you know, based on the current PE, but they're looking at earning like $1.80 next year, and forward earnings make this really cheap. So current it's 27, but forward earnings are more like around 15 or 14. I think this stock in the $20 number here is a buy and is going to be one of the better stocks for next year. I also like, of course, um, CSIQ, which is also my favorite, incredibly cheap. And those two may be the best solar stocks uh, for the year next year. Of course, we're in a period of low energy prices and that uh, often is not favorable for the solar industry who needs alternative energy right when you have $35 oil uh, or lower who even knows uh, but uh, looking forward I think that alternative energy is still going to be a place to be and two stocks Sun Power and CSIQ are my favorites in this energy sector energy and materials debacles all over the place I mean I'll just name a few of them APC that's uh, uh, Apache Devon DVN Chesapeake MRO NBR all down 8 to 13 percent for the week C drill down 26 percent for the week got a report out today from uh, Baker Hughes that they had uh, 21 more rigs that were mothballed, so uh, a lot of bad news coming out of that sector. Also, kind of another mention is Staples. Remember, uh, it was m merging with Office Depot. FTC stands in the way of that deal. Obviously, very afraid that there's not going to be a competitive environment for paper clips. So they have to get in the way of that deal. Man, do we have departments in this government that need to be canceled? I can tell you, FOMC, they're the first one that has to go. Anyway, before I get into a rant here, um, stocks for next week, I didn't mention one stock that's acting pretty nicely uh, that on the tape that I think has got some buyers coming in. Keep your eye on Twitter. I think you could be long a little of that one. As far as risky on the downside, I'm going to name six that I think have risk that can fall sharply in this market that I think is going to be quite weak. 
uh, name them, Tesla, Amazon, Facebook, Apple, Panera, which has gotten some pretty good strength in here because it's acting counter to Chipotle that has huge problems, and TripAdvisor, TRIP. Those are the six that I think have got pretty good risk of downside movement in the coming week. And that is the worst of the week. <laughs> All right, a great assortment of emails that we've had in these last couple of weeks. Uh, brought a few of them here to share with you. Uh, first one comes from KC. He says, Slim, I'm curious if you know uh, why there was such a big sell-off in the refining stocks recently. So here we are in the energy sector. I've had lots of questions, and I've done quite a number of segments about it recently. Um, the refining stocks, well, they have had a sell-off. And that has been based on the fact that they've had a really big run. Now, the reason for the question is because the cheaper oil gets, the better that is for the refining stocks because their margins improve. The cost of oil is their biggest input. So that would uh, then, you would think, be beneficial to the refining stocks. Well, it certainly was but they really got way ahead of themselves, and I think that's why they're having a pretty good pullback. Uh, Casey says, I'd like to get long Tesoro in the 107, 109 range. Now, we're gonna look at this Tesoro chart, and I really see what you're looking at here. Truth is, is that I probably would wait just a little bit, and I'll show you why. So here is that Tesoro chart on a weekly chart. You can see on the bottom are my cycle brackets. There are cycle analysis here to discuss, and that is the uh, continued uh, upward stair step movement that you can see in this cycle patterns right in here. This one a little bit weird and short. The rally again, and then rolling over right there. So you wanna buy right in here. Now that 13 day moving average comes in right there. We're gonna have a question of pretty soon about the uh, moving averages that I use. And so take note here of this 13 day uh, and uh, take note of this 30, I'm sorry, 13 week and take note of this 34 week moving average right here. Tesoro likes to come down and test that 34 week moving average. Uh, so I, to me, I wait a little bit. I think the stock could get down to 100 uh, and that would be the buy area. Note the bearish engulfing pattern right there two weeks ago. So that is uh, a spot that um, uh, said the stock is likely to pull back. And now that 34 week moving average looks more like a significant test to me. I'm looking at the cycle pattern here. It says, well, maybe this shows some weakness down into the beginning part of January. So I'm not in a rush to buy this one. Let's take a look at the other ones. Here is Valaro, V-L-O, as long as you've asked me about these refiners. And this one you can see looks to me like it has support coming in right under the 65, 64, 65 area. So this one still has a lot of downside room. Note the bearish engulfing pattern in Valaro also. MPC is the next one we'll take a look at. And here you will see there's that dark cloud cover right there and pulling on the downside. Also, this one has got more into the support area. If I were going to nibble on anyone, uh, then it would probably be this one because it's more into support. But also this pattern is suggestive of some weakness into the early part of January. So that's three of them that are, are looking like there's some weakness coming still in here. And maybe that has something to do with the bounce coming in oil. Oil has been extraordinarily depressed. Take a look at Phillips exactly the same alignment that we're talking about and uh, a couple cell patterns right in here and then declining towards the end of the year you could see that pattern right there so uh good question on the refining stocks and that looks to me like uh you will probably get some more pullback in there so not in a hurry to buy those, but a great question. PC writes me and he says, in your last future speak, you made uh, a few comments uh, regarding the yen uh, and uh, other securities that I talked about nibbling at them. Uh, yeah, I do kind of use that word nibbling at them. He says, I assume that you just take a small position in them and uh, that uh, it's more based on human intuition than it is on actually in the charts. Uh, and uh, do you, you, you do that before you actually have a buy signal in them? Uh, it's just do you advocate doing that? 
Uh, you know, truth is, PC, you know, for me, the charts is what I look at, and they give me a gut feel. So charts kind of stimulate my intuition. And yeah, you know, I will nibble at them, take some small positions, kind of want to keep them on the radar when they haven't yet given me a signal, but they're getting down to the point where I think they are uh, more, uh, more comfortable in taking a little taste, let's put it that way. And uh, to me, uh, if you look at the euro and the yen, which I was talking about doing that a couple of weeks ago, those would have really paid off, and uh, you would have, you know, had some sense about the buying that was coming in on them. So, yeah, I think it's okay to use your intuition uh, when you think something is close, and to take small positions in there. That's, you know, like a quarter to a third of what your position would be just to start. ML writes me, and he says, uh, "What is it about that 34?" week uh, moving average on the weekly and the 89 day moving average what makes them such good indicators of support and resistance uh, he says there are also times that when a stock uh, price uh, bounces it bounces off the 34 week moving average however it's still below the 89 day moving average kind of in the middle there or vice versa how do you know which of the moving averages to focus on uh, 34 a week, 89 day, or any of the other ones that I use, and you know why do you use those particular moving averages? Well, first of all, I scroll through some 400 symbols, so that's a lot to look at all the time. So what I I had to find out, uh, I had to find the moving averages or other tools, of course, that I could use. That while scrolling, they had some consistent value. I had, you know, seen that you know everybody uses the 50 and the 200 day, and that they were very commonly watched. And I didn't find overall that they were all that good. Um, so many times they talk about the golden cross or the death cross, where the 50 goes over the 200, and that that's a very slow indicator. Often the move is is done already before uh, you can even get a signal on those. So I wanted to find something better. I was scanning the internet, this was years ago, I read a lot of different posts on uh, different moving averages that traders were using. And in the, uh, some posts that I read, uh, especially in the, in the currencies, uh, we're talking about the value of the 13 uh, moving average, 13 day, 13 week, uh, the 3489. I looked at them all, all the Fibonacci numbers, and especially the Fibonacci primes, 13 and 89. They were really good. Uh, so I like those, and I started to use those almost exclusively. And after years of, you know, great success, uh, I uh, have continued to use them. And I think those are the best to use. So uh, if you're a longer term trader, and yeah, you're looking at the longer term patterns, you're probably gonna look at the 34 a week, a 13 a week also I like. If you're a shorter term trader and you're looking at daily charts, I like the 13 and 89 day. Let's just, uh, you know, we just looked at the Tesoro chart. Let's look at that again right now and you'll see how uh, Tesoro just uh, absolutely loved that 34 week moving average. Uh, I kind of said make a little note of that, but let's go back and take a little peek here at this 34 week moving average uh, into Tesoro. You find so many stocks that uh, do what uh, you see Tesoro do here over these couple of years as uh, the stock uh, every single time it had a good rally away from the 34 week it seemed to come right down and test it. You can see all of these right in here where it did that. So that's a great example of that. Take a look at Humana. We're going to look at the weekly and the daily in Humana. I'm just picking a couple out here, but I mean, uh, um, there's so many that these moving averages work so well. So here's Humana, here's the weekly, and you can see over these two years that it continually got support on that 34-week moving average. Even uh, that 13-week moving average was really good. Good. Then when it broke underneath the 34 week moving average right over here, then it stayed below it and hasn't been able to get uh, down uh, I'll get above it since. Also note the 13 week moving average crossover right there uh, and that was 
uh, a bearish crossover, so it's been negative there. And note that this whole rally uh, up here, the 13 week stayed above the 34 week. So this is a great pair to use. At, uh, I think it's very valuable. I also like the 21 34 week moving average for longer term trends. So you could take a peek at those also. Take a look at the daily chart in Humana, and we'll look at the 13 uh, day, 89 day. That's what I use on these daily charts. 13 day is in the middle of my slim ribbon. And that's that blue line right in here 89 day right here so you can see here it came up uh, to that 89 day made this bear wedge and then broke on the downside came back to the 89 day and then broke to the downside again did it right here again um, so there's an example of how this uh, 13 and 89 day are great moving averages and uh, I did pick out a couple stocks that I thought that they were good on but believe me uh, the, it works they work better than uh, almost any other combination of uh, moving averages that I have found. So uh, the next uh, question from PC says, uh, oh, that was the one from PC, so sorry about that. <laughs> the, the, the next question from uh, uh, PT is wants to know what my analysis is on Facebook. So we'll take a look there at Facebook. Uh, and uh, Facebook will take a look at the weekly chart first. That's usually where I start my analysis and bring that one up for you right now. And here is that chart in Facebook. So, uh, of course, what I do on my charts is I put in cycle projections. And everybody who subscribes to my charts gets these. So you can see there's a cyclic rhythm in here. And that's the rallies, the sell-off, the rally, the sell-off, the rally, the sell-off. Stair-step upward movement. I've been very bullish, by the way, this whole time in Facebook. So right now we're in one of these corrective periods right there. So that would say to me that, well, you know, stock looks like it's about to roll over. Support in here around 92 to 96, trading at 105. So there's pretty good downside. Note this 34 week moving average coming up here. Let's call it, well, 96 by the time the stock has a chance to pull down. So 96 is a pretty reasonable number to see this stock move on the downside. You'll also notice that these two timing spikes right in here are suggestive of the fact that this declining phase doesn't end until, well, we'll call it February. So uh, I would say this stock is a sale basically every time it tries to pick up its head between now and February. We'll take a look here at the daily chart. And you can see in here that it had a evening star pattern right at 100% Fibonacci extension level. Uh, gave a little doji right over there and now has this kind of a head and shoulders top forming in here. If you look at the 89 day moving average, that's around 97. So that 96, 97 number looks like a pretty important area here in Facebook. So uh, you can see the type of analysis I do there. Next question uh, comes from KS. This is a tough question, a good one too. KS writes and he says, Slim, you made some great calls this year and some really bad ones. Tough year for all the experts out there. Everyone got slaughtered on commodities. Oil seems to be the straw that broke the camel's back. And uh, so uh, I want to tell you, he said, uh, I'm a big supporter of yours. I know that you are. He says, uh, what's, and also, what's your opinion on the fertilizer stocks? And I think he picked these out uh, for uh, a special reason because, well, fertilizer stocks were some of my worst calls of the year. So this felt like the right question to bring. Uh, Potash Mosaic, he asked for AGU, uh, which I don't really follow any longer. And I'm also going to add in Monsanto. Uh, that we're going to look at just a second, but I want to uh, make a com. I want to respond to the comment that you uh, brought, KS, regarding those comments. The only way I'm going to make the great calls that I know I do make is to make some really bad ones too. That means having the nuts to get out there and uh, say what I really believe and uh, do it with some pretty extensive analysis. Uh, remember that fantastic Michael Jordan commercial about all the shots he missed? Well, sometimes I feel that way, and sometimes I'm going to get them wrong, but I believe I get a lot more good ones than I do uh, bad calls. 
Um, I also think that I'm one of the more flexible analysts out there because I'll change my mind uh, and really stick to what I see in the charts versus just having some really strong bias. And I got to tell you, I really do appreciate the feedback and all the support that you have given uh, throughout the years. Uh, so let's take a look at these stocks, which I've had these bad calls in, in uh, the fertilizer stocks. The first one we're going to look at is Potash. Now, my sense was uh, for the, the fertilizer stocks, now these calls were made last January 1st. So uh, these are from a year ago. Uh, and I'll recap those calls uh, in the next couple of weeks. But just these couple we looked at, my sense was that the grain market was going to do better this year. Actually, the grain market didn't, of course, and a lot of the um, you know stocks, the uh, fertilizer stocks, are uh, very, very subject to how commodities do in general. So uh, overall, this group did very poorly. And uh, this potash is the first one we're going to look at, which was uh, on my list of best for uh, uh, best 15 stocks for 15. And uh, here's where it started the year here, about 35, and comes all the way down to losing half its value. So talk about bad calls, this is one of them. Stock uh, cyclically looks like it has until about the, f so we'll call it middle of January before this declining period is over with. And then by then maybe we'll be in a better period in grains because these stocks do move. Higher grain prices mean it's better for farmers. And uh, when the farmers have some money, they can uh, grow, they can spend more money uh, and on anything they use on the farm and material and uh, uh, fertilizers are one of those. So that is a look at potash. The other one you asked me about is Mosaic, M-O-S. And you can see in here that this one similarly, now I don't have the colored phasing in here like I had in the other one, but this one also, notice the synchronicity in here, this one looks like sometime late January before this declining phase is over with. That's what these two spikes are pointing to the timing of the low there. So that one still also looks like there's more time on the downside. We'll call it maybe a month and a half. You asked about, asked about uh, AGU, I don't really follow this one, uh, but uh, it has a very similar pattern, AGU, let's just put it up really quickly, and uh, I did do some cycle analysis in there, and this one looks like a decline, you can see right in here, uh, also going into late uh, January, note the uh, little like abandoned baby right there some few months ago, uh, and uh, so this one looks to me like it's going to roll over also for a little bit more on the downside. Clearly the best stock in this group is Monsanto, M-O-N, and uh, you'll see here that this is a positive pattern setting up. Now, while this one still also looks like there's a decline coming in towards the end of the year, this one you can see has got this bullish basing pattern formed right in here, and that says that this decline, the energy from this decline is over with, and this one looks like we could get a move. I, I put it on my radar as a buy somewhere around 92, 93, and look for a move up to probably over 100 sometime early next year. So this is a much better pattern than the other one shaping up uh, in uh, Monsanto. Uh, of course, that's in the uh, Agrichem uh, category. JR writes me in the final question here, and he says, how do you typically trade around events like the coming FOMC meeting this Wednesday? He says, for example, the euro, and now here we are back in, uh, talking about uh, the euro, uh, which I, a couple weeks ago I said really looked like it was ready to start to move to the upside. He says that looks like another long side setup coming uh, after some little pullback in here on the euro. Uh, do you wait for the Fed uh, for some confirmation on these charts, or do you trade it small? So here we are again to that question about nibbling. Truth is, is that, you know, if, the, if it gets in the right spot, I want to put on a little small position, even in front of the Fed. Uh, and uh, then uh, if I'm wrong, it's only a small loss. If I'm right, well, I can add to the position and uh, really maybe catch a bigger trade. So small loss, bigger win. I like that. That's it. All the questions for this week. Uh, make sure you send me your questions and uh, we will bring them on the air, some of them. Uh, that's it. And uh, stay tuned because we're going to do our short term view. Hi, I'm Epiphany, the Ask Slim spokesperson. Thanks for watching our weekly show, The Ask Slim Market Week. 
Grow your analytical skills, strategies, and confidence when you watch videos from these six categories in our member area. Features speak. In-depth analysis of 24 commodities and index features. Tools for Techs, featuring how-tos on many charting tools, often highlighting current trading and investment opportunities. Trader Psychology, in which Slim brings a holistic approach to trading, looking at many personal issues that can be obstacles to success. Stock Sectors, a look at stock groups and ETFs that may offer present opportunities. IRA MO, with ideas for longer term approaches to your self directed retirement accounts. Big Picture Analysis, a broader view of the major markets with perspectives on important tops or bottoms or ongoing longer term momentum. So don't miss these great videos. Raise your probability of success by becoming a Level 2 member at www.askslim.com forward slash membership. <laughs>
pretty significant breakdown in the stock market and uh, volatility index that is exploding right on time. So we've had some uh, stuff that really came in perfectly based on our alignments. Let's take a look first as we look at the light crude market. Uh, now we're only looking at daily charts. We save the weekly charts for our subscribers and uh, that um, is of course available to you if you have TOS. Uh, and uh, you then subscribe to our charts. We'll send you a link every single week, just as Epiphany just told you about. So uh, let's take a look here at this uh, now slightly revised from a few weeks ago, uh, look at light crude on the short term. So we were pretty sure that what had happened was that we had uh, a doubling up of cycles in what looked like a short term capitulation. That was right in here where there was no visible rally at a time period where we expected a rally. Those of you that follow our cycle patterns see that this actually did double up and end up to be like 18 which is 2 times 9 and that only only hindsight could tell you that. I was confused, told you that, and said that I pretty much figured it was going to resolve itself getting back into these eight or nine day patterns. And you can see the eight in here and now this seventh day right in here. So being that I see that and I see this big decline here uh, out into, you know, coming towards the end of the year, um, it looks to me like what we're going to get is maybe a little bit more down in here and then an attempted rally. That's what my uh, notes look like on my um, uh, what, what I'm reading off of right now as I present this to you is this is what I have on my chart. Down early, a rebound attempt. Now it's possible that the bounce gets us up to this 3730 uh, area uh, area to 38. Um, 50. That's 38.50 right there. Uh, there's a, a little shorter term resistance at around 37.30. Uh, and that, uh, I think if that happened, it would just set up for another sell. Probably cause the stock market to get a bounce, but it would look something like this pattern in here based on these patterns. So uh, this is actually, uh, that would be a couple more days in here and then a nine day period here. So we're looking at about two weeks of projection in there and you can see a lot of risk still. There's a pretty good chance because of all of the record shorts in oil that you're going to get some bounces in here, but they are not likely to continue. So bounce and then down. That is a look at light crude. We're going to switch over and look at gold. Now, the intermediate pattern on gold, which I'm not going to show you, I'll just tell you, uh, let's get forward slash GC up there, uh, is uh, improved significantly. So I want to show you the shorter term patterns and here I'm on a two year chart right now and look at these magnificent cycle brackets down over here which perfectly outline the movement on these charts. Uh, if you don't follow my cycles and you look at this you got to really wonder why you're not. And here you can see the rally and the sell off and now what looks like a bottoming. Let's just look at these last two cycles right here. Let's look at just the last one cycle. And you can see we had this gray area is the area we thought that the low was going to come in because we had this bigger pattern coming in and we had these smaller patterns coming in. Well, there's the low right there. And now what we have formed in here, and we'll take even a closer look for you to see, is a bull flag. And what that points to uh, for the next week, and you can see these cycles that are pushing up right now, that's this big one, assuming we made a low, and these two smaller ones, that says we're likely to get a pop in here as the flight to safety continues into gold. So we're going to look for a move in here. We're going to call gold uh, kind of maybe chopping around a little bit more, but then getting a pop in here, you can see the resistance is at around 1100. And that is, I think, the important area. <clears throat> I could see it getting up there and getting up there in the next week. So we're going to look for some choppiness and then resolving itself on the upside with a good uh, upside pop in there. We'll call it an up week, not a major up week, medium to small up week based on what we're seeing in here. And uh, that's a look at gold for the short term. Next thing we're going to look at is the euro currency forward slash 6E. Now the euro currency, let's uh, move it in here, has gotten a big rally. Now those of you that have our intermediate charts, you know that we were looking for 
the euro currency to start to move up and we've talked about that and the yen being quite good for the early part of next year. So here you could see this bottom in place. Uh, we, had, we were looking at the smaller patterns in here also. So take a look at here. One, two, and three, and that rally. That's in here. One, and two, and three, and the rally. So that's how it shapes up. And now we're in this little declining phase right there. Again, uh, uh, what we look at in the dollar, it looks like the dollar's about to get a bounce. So this looks to me like we're likely to get some correction in here. If you get a move down in here to this support number, we'll call it around 108, 50, 60, 70 in there, that is likely to be the buy period because you can see it will turn up again in here. We're going to call for a small down week in the euro coming up here, but this I think will be a buying opportunity for another pop on the upside. The inverse of this is what we see <coughs> in the dollar chart. So that is a look at the euro currency. Now the bond market, forward slash ZN, this has gotten uh, a, a little different pattern than we expected as it gets stronger because of the issues with the junk bond market. There's a flight to safety going on. So the 30 year, which we had a sell zone set up and we thought it was going to move to the downside, well it did two weeks ago. We talked about this was the place to sell and look, it perfectly moved down in this cyclical period. We got into this period of rally and you can see in here that, well, there's the upside tick. So we think that this flight to safety will continue, and we're going to challenge this 127.16 area, uh, and then a roll over and then get into a corrective period. So we're kind of looking for a little bit more on the upside in here, and then begin to roll over. A lot has to do with this issue in junk bonds, some of these other firms that may be in trouble, and the uh, fact that uh, a, a lot of the um, energy, little energy companies are in a lot of trouble and how many of those are going to start to pop up and default. There's lots of worries in here. We could be getting into a period where we see some pretty good firmness in the um, treasury market despite what the Fed might do and this all might turn out to be kind of a bear flag that's forming in here that might pop out for you know a few weeks if it does this kind of a pattern like we see right in here so uh, what we're looking for is it rolling you know getting a little higher rolling over and then some further upside and that's certainly uh, because we see the stock market has some very significant issues here. So uh, last time I did my future speak, I talked about the uh, S&P 500 had an ambiguous pattern. I wasn't really sure about it. And today we got clarity in there as this pattern has turned into something that I would call scary. Let's take a look at this as I switch over and look at the S&P 500. So this is pretty much in alignment with the uh, piece that I did just a, a couple days ago looking at the correlation between the junk bond market and the stock market and the oil market. Let's take a look at here at this pattern in the S&P 500. And here is uh, the cyclical pattern as you see it shape up. And this is, uh, boy, I really give you a lot on this free show because this is stuff really uh, uh, that uh, has a lot to do with learning the very significant patterns that keep showing up in the stock market. So we've had this pattern that was pretty much solid at 13 days, 13, 14 days, and it extended out and it extended out to 16. So you could see this 16-day pattern, this 17-day pattern. Everything is measured from low to low in cycles. So this day, this one right over here bottomed on 16. This one here bottomed on 17. This one bottomed on 13. You can see that right there. And I wasn't sure about this day. That might have been day 17. It might have been day 4 if this was the rally. And guess what? The fact that we're now in day six cl puts clarity in that because we'd be in day 19, which doesn't really happen. So that says to me that we are in declining mode as I expected. That puts us all the way out here towards, we'll call it Christmas, or the couple days after Christmas, of a ton of risk in here. Now, our resistance zones in here are moving targets. 
and they're moving targets because of the amplitude of decline that we're getting in here. So we're not sure, you know, we might get bounces, but they might not get this high depending on where they come from. This six days off of this low suggests major downside risk. These two cycles coming down right in here suggest, well, two to four weeks of sharply lower prices. So where do we think uh, supports are? Well, right now, I mean, we believe that there's going to be a test of this area around 1991. That's the best case that we can see. So you can see it stopped at this intermediate support here on day 17. It's gotten close to it over here in this 89-day moving average. This is a place it could hold for a few minutes or hours. And But then after that, I mean, based on this day six, it suggests that there's a decline coming for the next seven to 10 days on the downside in here. And that uh, can be very severe. I think the odds are high of testing these areas right in here, uh, which are 1960 to 1942. These this is the intermediate 618 and the long-term 618. That is an area of support, and I think a pretty good probability if uh, we still keep if this market gets to the on the downside the way it, this these patterns suggest uh, that we're going to get down into that zone there or even worse so this is a bad pattern I don't usually uh, speak that aggressively uh, about potentials for severe declines crashes those type of things this is a scenario uh, based on these cyclical patterns that the probabilities have greatly increased of a per, some, some pretty good downside in here and uh, so uh, pretty good downside or crash depending on how you want to use the language uh, I think that there is a lot of risk in here we talked about the VIX getting into a time period where we thought there could be a big upside move that helped us with this analysis that was suggestive of the fact that the stock market might be getting, entering into a very risky period. Let's take a look at the weekly pattern. Uh, now this one I decided to share with you on the VIX so that you could see why we thought there was going to be a big upside move. Here is the VIX on the weekly pattern and you can see that arrow that we've had in there that was suggestive of a big upside move in implied volatilities. These two cycle patterns pushing up. Giant move there on the upside as you can see. Remember this got up to 53 here uh, in uh, that panic there. Uh, we could get to 40 here in this panic. I believe so. Uh, and so we're going to expect some continued upside bias in here. Maybe get a little pullback right over here and then more upside move out over here. Now we're projecting here out into March and March is the time period we expect um, the stock market to make its bottom so there's a lot of period in here that we could see a lot of volatility in volatility let's take a look at the daily in here and our short-term view of the VIX and uh, this a pattern in here you can see was suggestive of this rally and sure enough we are getting it and it could go higher so uh, if we're looking at some short-term patterns in here uh, we're remember we think the stock market's got a lot of risk so we think that this is going to do something like this continue to move on the upside some small little blip on the downside over here sometime uh, in you know a couple of weeks from now and at uh, that coincides with our stock market view and then another pop on the upside over here you could see these cycle patterns as they look that way just like this so that really helps us uh, get a sense for uh, how to project these patterns so uh, that is our short-term view and uh, you can see uh, we're uh, considering this a period of very very high risk for the stock market that's going to be supportive to the bond market and uh, if we're going to be choppy at all it's probably going to be because oil might get some rebounds in here maybe starting in the midweek period and that probably helps the stock market try to get back to the upside but I don't think it's going to be able to hold I think it's going to you know, hit, hit a wall and then continue to fall in a very hard way. So that is our short-term view of the week. I hope you have loved this show. I uh, hope you give us uh, good feedback and are interested in our new product coming out, uh, uh, rankings and setups. Uh, I think it's going to be a valuable product, very supportive to people that are uh, in our uh, uh, subscribers for our charts. Uh, and overall, I think it's going to be valuable. That is it. I want you to have a great week. I'm always wishing you Great trading.